Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the first ever Pennies for Monarchs virtual fundraiser. My name is David Donofrio, and I'm honored to serve as the president and founder of Pennies for Monarchs. Pennies for Monarchs is a national nonprofit organization. We are an active grassroots movement that will engage people door to door, engage our leaders in public office, and engage our children in an epic campaign to save the monarch butterfly. I am going to be joined today by two of my fellow board members, Yannicka and Tiffany, who will be presenting various parts of this program. Today, specifically, we're raising money for the Seed to Milkweed program. Seed to Milkweed Egg to Monarch is a customized science curriculum in which middle school science students become part of the solution by learning about monarchs and milkweed and creating monarch habitat at their school. Throughout today's event, please click on the pinned message on Facebook to contribute. We need to raise $2,000 to get this program off the ground today. You can also go to penniesformonarchs.org and click on Give Your Pennies, and we really appreciate your support. As it shows here on our graphic um, and our literature, if this penny saved my life, would you save me? Okay, so to begin, I'd like to show you a brief video that highlights this incredibly unique species and why, unfortunately, it is in danger. Just one moment. Could the monarch butterfly go extinct within our lifetime? The population of both eastern and western monarchs has been declining for years, but new data from the Xerxes Society for Invertebrate Conservation shows a devastating decline in the number of western monarchs migrating through California last year, 86% fewer than the nonprofit group found in its 2017 census. Even worse, the Western monarch population is down 97% from the 1980s. The Eastern monarch is also in perilous decline, down a staggering 90% compared to just two decades ago. If nothing is done to reverse these declines, scientists say Western monarchs face the very real threat of extinction in the next 20 years. The epic migration of the monarch has been celebrated as one of nature's most fascinating phenomena, the most complicated migration of any insect known. Monarchs east of the Rocky Mountains travel thousands of miles to overwinter in a forest in Mexico. Western monarchs travel down the coast to overwinter in eucalyptus trees and other butterfly-friendly spaces. These overwintering spots are a mosaic of black and orange with butterflies smothering entire patches of forest. So what's the cause of this near extinction? Scientists have found that the increased use of herbicides, most notably Roundup, is to Aggressive use of this weed killer has decimated the population of native milkweed, which is the sole food source of the monarch caterpillar. Genetically modified corn and soybeans have been designed to withstand spraying with this herbicide. With huge swaths of the country now planted in GMO crops, the use of Roundup has skyrocketed. Native milkweed, which is typically prevalent along the edges of farmland, is being quickly eradicated by the new zero tolerance weed policy that GMO farming has created. Why worry about the population decline in the monarch? Beyond its role as an important wildflower pollinator, the monarch is considered the canary in the coal mine. Because of its relationship to environmental pressure, the monarch's population health indicates the health of a whole ecosystem. The good news is that it's not too late to fight for the monarch's survival. But scientists say it can't wait. Start by planting your native milkweed species and allowing wild milkweed habitats to thrive. 
Ditching herbicides in favor of more environmentally friendly weed suppression methods will also help restore the monarch's beleaguered population. There are over 100 species of milkweed, all bearing the Latin Asclepius, named for the Greek god of healing and medicine. Be sure to plant milkweed that's native to your region. You can do your part to help our monarchs and remains a beautiful sanctuary. All right, so as you can see from that dramatic video, it is up to us as humans to stop habitat loss, stop using harmful chemicals, and do what we can on our own to save the monarch. Now, we know that all pollinators are important, and our efforts of helping other butterflies as well as bees, birds, and other pollinators. But why do we highlight the monarch as being unique? Well, as it said in the video, uh, the monarch is kind of like that canary in a coal mine. It's a bellwether. It's an indicator of what's going on. Also, it is one of the only insect species in the world that completes an epic cross-continental migration each year, and this makes it a symbol of the entire pollinator movement. So let's take a look at that migration. So right here is where the monarchs originate, and this is a small, um, only several hectare location in central Mexico. Now, in the spring, it will migrate, first of all, right there over Texas and Oklahoma. Uh, and this is where the first American generation of monarchs' uh, eggs are laid. And then as we head into the spring and summer, they will migrate north into the United States and Canada. And this is where they're going to remain uh, especially right now during this time of year. Um, and keep in mind that there is also a similar migration occurring in California with the Western monarch. And then in the fall, this last generation is going to turn around and make that quick transition all the way back to Mexico. So uh, those are some kind, sometimes called the super monarchs because they're the ones that make the entire cross-continental trip uh, and they spend the entire winter in Mexico um, before coming back to Texas in the spring. So they have the very long life cycle. So isn't that just incredible? That one tiny insect could not just complete this journey, but also store in its mind, its species memory, uh, to repeat this journey generation after generation, year after year, it's just simply remarkable. But please remember that the monarch is unfortunately in grave danger, um, and we need to act now. So a quick reminder, you can help us reach our goal to kick off the Seed to Milkweed program in classrooms across America by clicking on the pinned link on this video. Uh, or visiting penniesformonarchs.org and click on Give Your Pennies. All right, so now, speaking of seed to milkweed, I'd like to introduce Yannicka Peterson. She is an educator in Western Washington State who created the Seed to Milkweed program. And she's now going to go ahead and begin describing it to us. So let's turn it over to Yannicka. Hey everybody, um, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for being here. My name is Yannicka and I'm a member of the a board member of Pennies for Monarchs and I'm also the science writer for our education program, Seed to Milkweed. 
So we are um, so excited to be piloting this next year. This is uh, one of the major reasons we're doing this fundraiser is to fund the pilot. Um, and we're gonna do it with just a few teachers. Um, and I'm gonna spend just about the next 10 minutes telling you about this program. Um, and I'm gonna do it kind of in a different way. Um, but before I jump into that, just really briefly, um, at the heart of what, what this program really is. So students plant milkweed seeds in the classroom, um, indoors and flats, and they also um, get just a few uh, local wild monarch eggs. By the way, raising wild monarchs is not a conservation strategy, um, but so it's an educational tool. So they raise the wild monarchs just a few in their classroom, and they're raising milkweed seedlings. And while they're doing this and making observations and asking questions, they are learning about important life science uh, standards, such as matter and energy flow, ecosystems, respiration, photosynthesis. Um, and at the end of the unit, they transplant those milkweed seedlings into their schoolyard to provide or to create habitat for monarchs. So, um, as David explained, monarchs are declining. Uh, we are facing, uh, they're facing extinction in our lifetime. That's a really heavy fact, but it's not inevitable. So, I'd like to invite you to do a visualization with me. And uh, you can go outside if you'd like. Um, if you want, you can hold something that represents hope for you. So um, I'm going to hold the seed that I found on the ground. It's from a tree nearby. And um, I would hold uh, a monarch egg or milkweed seed, but I'm in western Washington, and we actually don't have either milkweed or monarchs um, that go together here in western Washington. So, um, so I'm going to hold this instead. So are you ready? And close your eyes and I will let you know how to open them. So imagine it's the year 2030 and we start seeing news headlines in the spring when the citizen science monarch count is finished. The, headlight, the headlines say things like record high monarch count in 2030. Monarchs make astounding comeback largely thanks to students. Scientists believe planting of thousands of schoolyard monarch habitats across North America may be responsible for historic monarch comeback. But it won't just be headlines about monarchs. We start seeing headlines that say bird populations increasing, pollinators are recovering. Because anything we do for monarchs has ripple effects on the entire food web. This happens in multiple ways. First, milkweed doesn't just feed monarchs, it's food for 450 species of insects. And those insects in turn provide food for birds. Second, planting monarch habitat also means planting a variety of nectar plants, which provides food for other insects and in turn birds. Third, when students join the effort to bring back monarchs, they also start caring about other insects and birds and they find out that they need our help too. Monarchs are a gateway species to stewardship. We remember the year 2019 when we learned that the bird population was down 30%, three billion fewer birds than 1970, and that scientists were increasingly alarmed by the declining global insect population, that people were grieving the precipitous decline in monarchs. But now, in 2030, monarchs other insects, birds, are thriving again as a part of an interconnected, diverse, and resilient food web. You can open your eyes. That's the future I'd like to invite you to envision with me. And for those of you who are realists, I'll say this. I'm a realist too, and here is what I believe. That future might not be likely, but it's possible. And whether or not that future happens is up to us. So how do we get to those 2030 headlines? 
We need a massive movement, a wave of creative problem solvers who will build a better world, one where humans can thrive alongside other species. But what I'd like to focus on for the next few minutes is how the next generation in science classrooms around our country can play a vital role. So I'm gonna ask you to do another visualization with me. You ready? So close your eyes again. And imagine a middle school science classroom. It's the first day of a new unit and the teacher presents students with a graph showing the decline in monarchs. She asks her students, what's going on here? Why are monarchs in decline? But then she asks the crucial question, the question that's full of hope. What can we in this classroom do about it? Then she introduces students to two tiny, tiny life forms that she has, she has received from a local expert and has in her classroom now. A milkweed seed and a wild monarch egg. Both the seed and the egg have been collected locally. She asks students, how do you think it's possible that this tiny milkweed seed can turn into a big, beautiful plant? And how is it possible that this tiny egg can grow into a big, beautiful monarch. Presented with the wonder of a tiny egg, a tiny seed, hope itself, students start asking all sorts of questions, like where does all the matter in this growing milkweed seedling come from? And how does a caterpillar grow so quickly, so much, every day? These questions will lead them to discover big science ideas like photosynthesis and respiration. The teacher says, we're going to investigate your questions by observing the growing seedling and the growing monarch over the next few weeks. This will help us figure out what monarchs need to grow and thrive and what milkweed needs to grow and thrive, which will help us understand why monarchs are declining and what we can do about it. Over the next several weeks, students engage in hands-on investigations, they discuss their ideas, they write scientific arguments, they read scientific texts, and along the way, they fall in love with the plants and the monarchs in their classroom, both of which they are caring for. And they fall in love with the wild earth outside their classroom where these organisms truly belong. And they fall in love with the possibility of wildlife continuing. Not just monarchs, but all the insects, all the amphibians, plants, mammals, birds, fungi. And the students become caretakers. When the time is right, the milkweed seedlings planted indoors are transplanted to the schoolyard. The wild monarch butterflies are released during a celebratory event. Maybe next school year, some monarchs will fly through the schoolyard and choose to lay their eggs on the milkweed planted by students the previous year. Maybe students next year will collect a few of those wild eggs themselves and bring them inside the classroom to observe the wonder of metamorphosis and to fall in love with the monarch. And next year, the next class will plant another little patch of milkweed, maybe in a different spot in the schoolyard or maybe in a road divider near their school or maybe at a local business who saw the monarch habitat sign in the schoolyard and accepts students' offer to plant milkweed in front of their business. Students become empowered. Now open your eyes. It's up to us who are alive today to create the conditions for other species like monarchs to thrive, to restore ecosystems and their habitat. We might be the last, the crucial generation. And that's an exciting position to be in. And our seed to milkweed program might just be one project of many, many projects in our country and across the world. But with all of our efforts combined, we are mighty. We can do this. And we want, we're asking you to join us. We're trying to pilot this program with just three teachers next year. And then we will take it nationwide. And that's how we get to those 2030 headlines.
Thank you for watching. Thank you for your support. That was so awesome, Yannicka. Thank you so much. And now Yannicka is moving just a couple minutes away uh, to a beautiful waterfront area in her area. Um, and she's going to give us a quick lesson from the Seed to Milkweed program. So Yannicka, we'll go ahead and join you back here for your lesson. of a lesson that I could share with you all from the Seed to Milkweed uh, educational uh, curriculum. But um, it's a little tricky since I don't have access to Monarchs or Milkweed here in Western Washington. So I'm just going to teach you kind of a random and fun thing that you can do. And the nice thing is uh, it's really primitive. All you need is a big box. Um, it could be a Tupperware. It could be a, like, a box is great if it has a white inside or a clear inside, and something to beat the tree with. So another great thing is your neighbors are going to think you're really cool when you do this. <laughs> uh, so uh, you can do it in your front yard if you want. And you just go up to a plant, like a tree, and you put the box under it, and you beat it. <laughs> Once you have your neighbor's attention, um, forget about your neighbors, and you can see what you caught. So um, it's amazing. It's amazing how many insects live in different plants. And uh, I don't know what how much you can see there, but try it at home uh, with your kids or without your kids. Really fun. You can even trap the bugs and make uh, draw them and. Uh, yeah, that's just a little fun activity for you to do at home. Bye. All right. Well, thank you so much, Yannicka. And we really appreciate your willingness to partner with Pennies for Monarchs to launch your Seed to Milkweed program. It's really exciting, and we're going to bring it to life. Um, for those of you just joining us, or as a reminder, uh, we are raising funds today to make that Seed to Milkweed program a reality. So you can click on the pinned message on Facebook um, or go to our website, penniesformonarchs.org, click on Give Your Pennies. And as we said, we need to raise $2,000 today to make this program a reality. I know we can do it. All right, now we are gonna turn over today's program to Tiffany, um, another member of our board. And she would like to introduce you to a monarch that she has been raising uh, right here in her home of Ohio. Hi, Tiffany. Wonderful. And we are good to go. Awesome. So this is the story of Penny. Um, Penny has become our monarch. Um, so we're going to take you from the time that she, we found her on a leaf as an egg to um, releasing. So from milkweed to monarch, the story of Penny. How does a monarch that is so small, smaller than a grain of rice become a butterfly ready to take flight. The answer is all in a plant, a milkweed. Um, and I'm gonna give you a little bit of a backstory here. Um, when my kids were little, they're now teenagers, um, they uh, were, my youngest especially, my son, loved butterflies. And around this time, we noticed this weed growing in my backyard. Um, we didn't know what it was then, but we know now that it was milkweed. And milkweed really is a weed. If you let it grow, it will grow. And so now we have a lot of it. And our milkweed is, is this type is called common milkweed. 
Um, it has um, pink uh, flowers and um, it grows and spreads like crazy once it establishes itself. But it is not the only type of milkweed. All of these seeds I harvested from my backyard. After the summer is over and the milkweed leaves start dying, um, what is left will be these seed pods. And inside just one pod, there are thousands of these seeds. Um, and the milkweed pod itself will burst open and these will be spread um, on the wind, by the wind. Um, and this is a common type of milkweed grown right here in central Ohio. Um, but there are over a hundred species of milkweed grown in the United States. Depending um, on which region you live in, you will have a certain type that grows best where you live. Um, just a few weeks ago, on July 12th, um, we found this egg. And um, since uh, David Lott launched um, Pennies for Monarchs, we thought it would be nice if we raised just one as our very own ma mascot and name it Penny and see how it grows. Um, so we found Penny the egg on July 12th. Five days later, you might see that one little egg start to turn blackish green. That's when you know that um, your caterpillar is crawling out of its egg um, and ready to emerge. And first it's gonna eat that egg and then it'll start eating the milkweed. So um, on July 12th, um, we found her July 17th. She um, hatched and then um, you can see the different pictures about how quickly she's growing in just a few days. You, that little, little dot that we saw as an egg and then a tiny little caterpillar is now growing and, and growing. And July 27th, she's almost um, the diameter of the, um, the penny already. It's a little bit over a week, which is pretty cool. And now this is Penny. Penny is only three weeks old and she's becoming much larger than that Penny that we saw. That was what just three weeks ago, that Penny was so much bigger than she was. I just wanted to put two pictures side by side to show you what can happen in just three weeks. Um, this is where we leave Penny because Penny is still that caterpillar that you saw um, in the last slide. This is a, um, a little picture of a Penny, but this is a picture of one of my other caterpillars. That other caterpillar, we're gonna release, oh, oh, never mind. That other caterpillar we're gonna see later. Okay, so your caterpillar grows and grows and grows and grows, eats and eats and eats. And then one day she or he or, let's just, just, just call her Penny, Penny stops eating. And if you're not familiar with the process, you might think something is terribly, terribly wrong. Um, then Penny will climb to the top of her enclosure or the top of the milkweed or wherever she can get to out in the wild. And she'll furiously start making a silk button um, with her mouth. And from there, she will hang upside down in this J-like formation 
and it takes in a, about a day, about 24 hours, and you will see Penny shed her skin, her last caterpillar skin. And then she will be this beautiful green chrysalis. And inside the chrysalis is where she is transforming into a butterfly. How do you know that she's ready to emerge? That green, um, that green that you see as a chrysalis um, becomes lighter and lighter and lighter. And you'll start to see like the lines of the um, butterfly wings until that casing is perfectly translucent. And you see that there is a butterfly that is just cramped in that little enclosure. And it's gonna stay there until it bursts. You can see this process. I caught it with, a, with another butterfly we had recently. And then it comes out and it's all crinkled. Um, and it just takes a few minutes um, for those uh, wings to start straightening and drying. And then just a few hours later comes the hardest part. That butterfly that you've been watching um, grow as an egg to a caterpillar to the chrysalis and now to this butterfly. You don't get very much time with that butterfly before it's time to see the butterfly go. So my backyard, after all this milkweed grew, we decided it should really be a monarch way station. And so we didn't get in trouble for having <laughs> milkweed all over our backyard. Um, also, we don't spray anything in the backyard. Um, we do not want to poison our monarchs. So they're safe. And there goes our butterfly. All right. Thank you, Tiffany. So it's so cool not just to watch videos or presentations, but to actually see the progress of a milk of, of a monarch, sorry, across its entire um, span of life from the very beginning of the egg being laid all the way to the butterfly being released. Um, so Remember that your support today is what makes programs like these possible. Um, we are pennies for monarchs and we are responsible as humans to reverse the trend and to save this precious species forever. It is in our hands. It is in this generation's hands. Um, as it said in the beginning in the video, um, the next 20 years determine whether we have monarchs or not in the future. So it's up to our generation today, right now, to step up. So we're asking you to step up from wherever you are watching this video. Contribute $50, $25, even $10. Gets us toward that $2,000 goal. What that goal is raising money for is seeds and milkweed. It's going to put this program in classrooms across the United States. It's going to instill this love of the monarch like you've watched today to thousands more students. We're gonna be raising milkweed and raising monarchs all across this country, and we are gonna reverse this trend. It is in our hands, we can do it, and it starts with your support today. So, just one more time, um, you can click on the pinned link on this video to contribute. Go to our website, penniesformonarchs.org, and click on Give Your Pennies. And so, just keep in mind, we need you. The monarch needs you. Just one or two bad seasons could turn the clock back, but one or two good seasons could save the monarch from extinction. It is in our hands. 
So before you go, we're going to go back to Tiffany, and she has a special surprise to share with everyone. So I want to thank you for tuning in from all of our members and all of our board, and let's see what Tiffany now has to share with us. Hi, everybody. This um, is a butterfly that just emerged this morning. We actually have two. I think, uh, so we have two and um, something weird but fun that I do is name them after friends. And so this one is my friend, Joel. And um, so Joel, this is your butterfly. And you, can, uh, you can't tell if the butterfly is male or female until after they're like an adult. Um, but I name them when they're, ca when they're caterpillars, so I never know. But this one is dedicated to my friend, Joel Newby. And um, look at that. It's not quite ready to go, but we're going to see if um, we can encourage her to fly away or Joel to fly away. Does everybody see? I'm going to put him on my... Oh, he is a boy. Okay, so Joel. I'm going to put Joel on my... Um, my little this is my monarch mesh enclosure and see if he wants to fly away from here i don't know if can you guys see him yeah oh, okay cool maybe i should stand up and help him a little bit i just want you guys to be able to see with the um with my daughter's computer so Walk with me. Don't mind the shakiness of the computer. And let's see if we can get him to go. Do you want to go? Okay. He's on some milkweed. You can do it. Oh, oh. Come on. Let go. Nope. Oh, hey, okay. he's there. He's there, he's there. Do you want to fly? Not yet. Oh, he's looking around, look at him. He's just hanging out. He's just hanging out, you want to go, Joel? He might not want to go. Let's try the other butterfly. See what happens. So walk back with me to my other butterfly named Crystal. Oh, there she is. Okay. Okay. Ah, this one's ready to go. Okay. Okay. You ready? Yes, okay. Crystal. 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 Oh, Crystal. <laughs> She's so ready. Come here, Crystal. Crystal. Come here. Baby, come on. Come on, Crystal. All right. I see her flying around in there. She is. Come here. Come here. Won't be long. Here's wow. Crystal. Hi, Crystal. I'm gonna put her up here. There she goes. Oh my gosh. Can I see her? Yes. Bye, Crystal. Wow. Oh, there. Okay, there's Joel. He might need a little bit more time. Can I see him? Joel? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to leave Joel alone, but we got to see Crystal go. That is so cool. All right. Oh, you want to see my backyard? Sure. Your okay. milkweed too, right? Yeah, this is just milkweed. It's everywhere. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's everywhere. That's how the magic happens. It's all about the milkweed. <laughs> so cool. So that's it for me. Bye. Thank you, Tiffany.